the stars are right in. That means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are continuing with a review of the Mystic cards in the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion for the benefit of new players. We're going to take a look at Song of the Dead, Bind Monster, Fearless Level 2, and Blood Pact. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Just a quick reminder of how we rate cards here on the Whisper in Darkness. The best of the best get an Elder Sign, while the worst of the worst get an Auto Fail, and the cards in between get a plus one, zero, or Elder Thing respectively. Cards that you build around, or are good in one particular deck, get a blessed token, while cards we believe are destined for the list of taboos or are simply bad for the game get a curse token. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these player card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Special thanks to Cole Monroe Chitty for the amazing art that graces the channel, Nicole Fiscus for the new Whisper in Darkness logo that I use for the podcast, and Nate Lost in Time and Space for the intro as well as the overlays. Thank you very much. I couldn't do it without you. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back everyone to part three of our look at the uh, mystic cards in the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion. For the benefit of new players, we're going to start off with Song of the Dead. It is a two-cost asset that costs two experience points. Willpower, skill icon, spell, and song trait uses five charges. As an action, you can spend a charge to fight. This attack uses willpower instead of combat. You get plus one willpower for this attack. If a skull symbol is revealed during this attack, this attack deals plus two damage, and it takes up an arcane slot. Talk about feast or famine. You want to talk about a card that doesn't have enough support for it in the box, and this is it. Man, if you had Dark Prophecy and a couple other cards like Olive, be able to like really get this going man this would be pretty good but yeah. oftentimes you may get one or two of those five charges to get that that damage bonus and at that point you're playing shriveling but it's over more actions and that's yeah. not not where you want to be i i, I, I like have the... always really wanted to like this card because I like Jim quite a bit. I think he's a pretty good investigator, and I like I like what he does to the chaos bag math quite a bit. I think that's really fun. And this card seems really great in Jim. You know, it works with skull tokens, which he wants to draw, but he has no way of reliably getting those yeah. skull tokens for this, and that's the biggest issue with this card. Yeah. That being said, everything the else fact is... that it Yeah, everything else is pretty good. Yeah, I think if you look at it as it's two cost, five charges, deals a damage, adds one to you know, and adds one to your uh, your attack, which is kind of the same as like a basic weapon, like forty five automatic or like machete or something, and you just accept that it's only sometimes going to deal three damage. I think it's not bad. If you think you know? about it like that, it's kind of like a reverse baseball bat. A reverse. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's true that's true i mean yeah this thing it's it's inexpensive it has five charges which is a lot it does have its own built-in boost to the test yeah and it sometimes deal two, deals three damage yeah if no. you just go into it expecting to deal one and you're okay with that this card's fine it's it, it's, it's got a lot your... going for it like it has yeah. a lot of potential yeah you know? one thing to note about it is that if you're in a situation where you're not the primary fighter. Now I'm talking like a multiplayer game of sort uh, of, of course, where you're not the primary fighter, but let's say like you and another investigator are at a location and a big baddie drops out and you, you just attack three times with song of the dead, you know, knowing that you might kill it because you draw a skull, you might not because you don't draw any skulls. I think it's, it's kind of, it's fine. I'd say it's fine because if you're, if you're attacking three times with this, like, your odds of of one of them being skull kind of goes up. And within the context of just core and Dunwich, you don't have a second fight spell, right? It's just shriveling. Yeah, that's true. It's just shriveling in Song of the Dead, and that's it. So if you want shriveling's mm -hmm. copies three and four, this is yeah. it. 
And if you put both of them out there, a shriveling and a song of the dead, like you can just fire the song of the dead at a three health enemy. If you draw a skull, awesome. You've defeated a three health enemy. If you don't draw a skull, that's okay. You finish it off with shriveling, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, two actions spent, you know, and you actually save shriveling charges that way. So I feel like this card is like if as long as you don't set your expectations too high, I think this card's fine. Personally, as a solo player, I really don't like this card. I, I can see that. It yeah. is not. Because you need reliability. Yeah, yeah, the reliability here is just mm -hmm. too... I guess the biggest problem is not that it you know will hit for plus two damage sometimes, is that it's hitting for one damage most of the time. And in that respect, it reminds me a lot of Wither from uh, the Circle Undone cycle. And... If you've ever been a solo player who has been trapped with only a wither on the table and you are fighting something, you are in for a world of hurt. I think this one is slightly better than wither in that it does give you the possibility that occasionally you will luck out and deal three damage, but it's all those times when you really need your action, like when you really need that three damage. Like if you've got two enemies on you or... You're fighting a boss or something, man, oh man, it's just, you need that consistency, and unfortunately, as we've said before, there's chaos bag manipulation in this box is just slim and none, so you've got to either go in to, to pick up a grotesque statue, or, you know, you're just, you're not going to see the or skulls when you need them. The, Jack, the Jacqueline Fine starter deck. Yeah, I've, I, I've tried this card, I mean, it looks fantastic on paper it's just like man five charges three damage and then you just never see the skulls and then it's just like okay so i'm gonna fight this three health enemy and i'm gonna take waste three actions doing it that's not a good spot to be in how would we rate this one i'm gonna give this an elder thing I think it's serviceable as shriveling three and four, like provided that you have a reliable source of damage, but like you need to conserve on your shriveling charges. Like this is nice in that circumstance. You can play your song of the dead and your shriveling. And like Matt was saying, you can kind of like pick which, which one you use depending on the circumstance. Yeah. I think another knock against this card is that a lot of Dunwich enemies have health and health totals in multiples of two so oftentimes you're over killing them even when you do draw that token so like you'll draw a zero or whatever on your first test you'll deal one and then you'll deal four and that would be ideal to kill a four health enemy but that's just shriveling charges one and two and that's like it's the same thing so just do that so yeah i i gotta settle on elder thing like at least it does something when you play it and it's cheap and it has a lot of charges on it and then you know once you build out your card pool then this becomes pretty decent but yeah, yeah just as is it's yeah man jim really needed olive mcbride like olive mcbride really needed to be in this set thing about jim in this card is that jim doesn't miss when he draws it when he draws the skull there are some times where a skull can get to be like some campaigns that skull can get to be like minus four minus five sometimes but that's where, that's where Jim shines because he he won't miss when he draws a skull and he's going to get that three damage. It's just that this Dunwich Legacy is not that campaign. I mean, there are often enough where like the skull is a minus one and like any investigator is going to hit on that skull. So the Jim premium isn't really there. But they're like, this is this is talking about Carcosa sadly. But um, like if you have Jim, Olive McBride, and Song of the Dead, you're actually in a really you're actually got something going there. Because the downside of Olive McBride is that you have to reveal three tokens and resolve two of them. So if you're playing Jim, the good part is if one of those three tokens is a skull, it's a zero. So you're, it's, you're only having to resolve one token worth of negatives, and then you're probably hitting with your Song of the Dead. But that is not this set. That is down the line, sadly. So I think in that, con in that regard, this is kind of an elder thing. But its stock, I think, actually goes up a bit if you have a few more cards like Olive or Dark Prophecy from the Jacqueline Fine Starter deck. Yeah, this one is a, an elder thing for me. Even, you know, even as Shriveling 3 and 4, it sort of assumes that you're not playing any other, you're not playing Rite of Seeking because of that arcane slot. And then you're right back into this, like, well, I've got to play Book of the Shadows, which is, 
no, that's just bad. So I think, I mean, if maybe in three or four player where you have the luxury of a mystic who can just be, you know, enemy management, they play shriveling, they play this, they're off killing stuff. This comes in handy then because you can sort of say, okay, well, I'll fire this off. Hey, maybe I hit with a skull. I deal three. If not, I deal one. I can follow up a shriveling and kill it. I think if you're playing certainly solo, I wouldn't consider this. It's just way too slow. And even two player, like, I don't know if I'd want to be mm. playing two player with this and being like having shriveling this and then a right of seeking to juggle. I don't know. It'd um, be... I think one way you could do it is, yeah, I guess I am kind of coming from the three and four players perspective where let's say you're playing, you can do gym and you have shriveling song of the dead and a weapon like uh, machete. Or if you're Agnes, you could have like shriveling this and baseball bat. And then you have like six offensive assets. I mm -hmm. think you could make that work. Yeah. I think if, if we had, if they had included dark prophecy or all of, or just, any card that lets yeah. you fish for tokens in some way a lot of these cards would look a lot better than they do right now a lot of these cards do improve once you have that ability but unfortunately having a couple of grotesque statue charges is just not enough to to re reliably hit with these things enough so that brings us to bind monster it is a three cost event that costs two experience points willpower and intellect skill icons spell trait evade this evasion attempt uses willpower instead of agility if you succeed and the enemy is non-elite evade it and attach bind monster to it as a response when attached enemy would ready test three willpower if you succeed attached enemy does not ready if you fail, discard a Bind Monster. I have never played this card, and I have played a lot of Mystic. Am I missing something? No, I don't think so. I think the only, the big thing that holds this thing, this card back, is that it costs three resources. If this costs one or two, I think it'd be pretty good, honestly. Yep. There's a lot of really just annoying, pesky hunter enemies that this would be really good against if mystics were a class just overflowing with resources because mm -hmm. you know two experience is reasonable you know even if you only ping in it like hold an enemy down for a couple turns like that's usually enough time for you to effectively like get rid of it entirely you know yeah. at least out of the confines of the scenario so i want to like this card and i think if this card was designed in a more recent set, it would probably cost two. Okay. You know, comparing this to something like Spectral Razor or Ethereal Form, all those events cost two. I think this is around the same power level as those cards, and it also costs two experience and three resources. So it's like, I, I think yeah. this is one of those cards that was just conservatively costed, because they, they probably felt like this was a really strong effect that they didn't want you to have easy access to, but as time has progressed, this effect has not been something that players gravitate towards, sadly. And I think it's a cool effect. Yeah, I wonder if this is another one of those cards that was designed for the parallel universe that we keep referring to, where enemies were tough. Yeah, where enemies had like really large health pools, so like yeah. shooting them wasn't very effective. Yeah, yeah. like Conglomeration is a great example. It's got six health. It's just annoying to kill because it eats your weapons. Yeah, like those types of enemies, mm -hmm. this thing is really good against because you yeah. can lock it down fairly easily. You know, and if you're playing someone like Agnes or Jim, like four or five willpower, you're going to you're going to succeed at least two of those probably before yeah. you fail that. And you're well on your way to beating the scenario at that point, I'm sure. Yeah, the one, the one thing that's also really nice about this card is that it negates Retaliate. So mm -hmm. if you have this figurative enemy that has a lot of health and is tough to deal with, or let's say it's a non-elite enemy that has like two per investigator health, like a lot of health, if an enemy like that has Retaliate, that's nasty. Because then, you know, you can it can get really swingy trying to take it out. But if you had something like this, you exhaust the enemy, you keep it exhausted for multiple turns, it can't Retaliate when you're when the team is trying to take it down. Thing is, like those enemies aren't common in the 
this current universe Arkham Horror, you know, if if they really exist much at all. So I want to like it, but I think the situations where I would play, where I'd want Bind Monster, I'd probably just end up playing Blinding Light. Yeah, the the cost on this one is a real uh, detractor for me. Mystics at this stage simply don't have the resource generation to be playing things like Rite of Seeking and Shriveling and then affording three cost uh, events all that often. The other thing I don't really like about this is the skill test on this. I can understand why it's there. Three seems a little steep to me because that's not easy for Jim. Like he's oh, only yeah. got four willpower. So this isn't a slam dunk for Jim. And even at Agnes at five, you know, say she's got, you know, 70 to 80% chance of passing this. If you've got an enemy locked down that you really want to keep locked down, I wonder how often you'd be tempted to overcommit to this because you, know you, I think? you oh. feel as though you have to. It's just like, oh, we've got this, say, conglomeration locked down. How, you know, we want to keep it locked down. So I'm going to commit resources and cards to keep this buying monster online. I don't you know. know. I guess I wish the test was a little lower. The other problem with tests like this is that they open you up to some of the special tokens have bad effects that aren't based on pass fail. They simply happen. So if mm -hmm. you draw, say, the tablet, X happens regardless of pass or fail. Yeah. And some of those effects are very nasty. Like they force you to drop clues or things attack you or like any of that stuff. So you're just sort of taking extra tests. And depending on the scenario, that would be... I'd be a little hesitant to be just like, hey, I'm just going to keep reaching into the bag turn after turn and hope I don't draw any of these really nasty effects. I mean, it's it's um, I think it's a minor point, but yeah. depending on the scenario, sure. tempting fate with the bag is something that people tend not to do. I think Nate brought up an interesting point about a modern design. I think there's a card kind of similar to this in Edge of the Earth. It's the one, it's the 3 XP Calvin card that like enemy comes into play, you lock it down forever. Yeah, I, I have a feeling if this were designed in like the modern era, there wouldn't be a test at all. It would just lock it. It would lock the enemy forever. Yeah, because we do actually get a couple of, this isn't the only mystic card in the card pool that forces yeah. you to do a test. There are some other ones that we get later. It's not something they actually do all that often but the one that comes to mind is alchem alchemical transmutation that's released in uh, the path to carcosa investigator expansion where it's just like do a thing and do a test to see if you can succeed this one is sort of the same sort of yeah. sort of thing doing a test every turn i just if the test was a little lower and this was a little cheaper i think there are definitely scenarios where i could find use for this but as it stands, I just look at the three resource cost and flinch. <laughs> How would you guys rate this one? I want to give it an elder thing, but it's just, it's too expensive. So I, I got to give it an auto fail. You just, you have so many better options at dealing with enemies than this card, sadly. I want to, it's really cool design. I, I wish this was a good card, but it's, it's not. I think... Given that Blinding Light does what this card does and costs less and is zero XP, I think that means that this thing deserves an auto fail. I wish Bind Monster let you target an enemy that was not engaged with you, because then it would have a neat niche. If Bind Monster let you either engage the enemy as a part of start as a part of playing the card, or let you target something that was not engaged with you i think then it would have a nice niche but it doesn't like i said at the top i have never played this card i am going to give it a, an elder thing simply because i know somebody in the comments is going to point out that one situation when this card is awesome so it doesn't make me it gets a bless that doesn't mean it deserves a bless <laughs> no no it's getting an elder thing but it's like hanging by its fingernails into into the drop into the auto fail territory. Yeah, I, I've I've never played this. It's it's too expensive. It's I I can't even think of a situation when I would want this type of effect because usually enemies just die. Like enemies aren't locked down in this game. 
It's not a thing that happens. It's especially in multiplayer. Like if there's an enemy on the table, it's usually dealt with and dispatched and move on. And this, I guess, could eliminate a lot of those actions, but you're relying on a skill test and eventually that skill test is going to fail and then you're going to have to deal with probably deal with the enemy anyway if it's worth locking down to begin with so mm -hmm. yeah not a not a great uh, use of your uh, of your xp the next card we're going to look at is an upgrade from the revised core this is fearless level 2 to willpower skill icons innate developed trait if this skill test is successful, heal one horror, two horror instead if it succeeds by two or more. This is the type of healing that I uh, I uh, like. Play this in my Agnes deck. Usually she has enough willpower that succeeding by two is not uh, really an issue a lot of the time. And uh, so healing two horror on her so she can continue to soak horror to deal damage to enemies is nice. Can't complain about the two willpower skill icons either. What do you guys think of this one? No, very, very solid upgrade. You know, extra, extra skill icon is great. Extra healing is great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, especially in the case of Agnes, who, uh, you know, uses her, um, horror, who uses her sanity as a resource. I think this thing is, is pretty good. I mean, even, I mean, Daisy can use this to a lesser extent. Ratings? I'm going to give it a bless token. You know, I, I think outside of agnes how much horror healing you really need is kind of up to debate i think mm -hmm. you know if you don't really need the horror healing then this card isn't really going to be that useful i think there are certainly more impactful upgrades that you could make with two experience i think specifically like shriveling or something like that right of seeking mm -hmm. you know i wouldn't i wouldn't upgrade into fearless before i upgrade into right of seeking so yeah. i i think for that reason i'm going to give it a bless token you know i think in agnes okay. it's very good but outside of maybe daisy and necronomicon shenanigans this is it's okay but it's not you know it's it's not a linchpin of your deck for sure yeah i think i agree i was i was initially thinking zero because num numerically it's pretty good but yeah it's especially good if you're using your um if you're using your sanity as as a resource like uh, Agnes does. Yeah, I, I'll agree with that. Um, I think I, it gets a bless. It's actionless, which is nice. Um, you spend XP, and it gives you that second icon, so it's already up there with guts, you know, for, like, icons. Yeah, Mystic also kind of lacks a... Um, at this point, Mystic lacks a way to get lots of um, wild icons, um, mm -hmm. whereas, like, Seeker got Inquiring Mind. So Mystic can kind of... And Mystic's at a point where... If you're using willpower to both deal damage and investigate, then willpower is is particularly good for Mystic. So I think, yeah, I see I see it being bless. I could also see I could also see arguing zero, um, just in general, because of the state of Mystic at this point. But yeah, this, this thing's nice. Yeah, I'll make the case for a zero. I think this is a pretty solid upgrade, especially if you are going heavy into shriveling, simply because yeah, you are going to you. pull. Mm -hmm those special tokens from time to time and you are going to take horror especially if you go all the way up to uh, level five shriveling and you pull a special token and you take two horror that's a pretty tough hit to swallow so having something like this that can sort of mitigate that is i think important i could see playing this in gym if gym goes up to level three shriveling and then level five I think it would be worthwhile. Jim's got a lot of sanity, but even if you draw a couple of those special tokens, you're going to you're going to need some way to heal that horror. I don't think you can just take two short two horror shots to the head for a scenario and, well, and walk away. Jim, however, very underrated. Jim's trumpet. True. In yeah. multiplayer. Oh, especially in multiplayer. Yeah, Jim's trumpet, but he does have the trumpet. Yeah, I think this one's pretty good. It's like you said, it's not the first card I'm upgrading. This is this is pretty far down the line in terms of upgrades, but if I have the XP then I don't think you could uh, you could go wrong. The the fact that this is actionless healing is is awfully nice. That brings us to Blood Pact. It is the permanent asset that was released in the Blood on the Altar set. It's permanent, so it doesn't cost anything. Costs 3 experience points. 
Spell and Pact trait as a free triggered ability. You can add one Doom to Blood Pact. You get plus three willpower for this skill test, limit once per test. Or as a free triggered ability, you add one Doom to Blood Pact. You get plus three combat for this skill test, limit once per test. Those are some uh, pretty generous uh, skill bonuses, both for willpower and combat. And uh, of course, you have to add a Doom to Blood Pact. So you need to be careful if you can arrange for tests to fall during the witching hour go crazy you can add doom every test and and be quite happy uh, especially if you have to fight a big monster i think i had to i did that once where i ended up engaged with some big beefy monster and had to do three three combat skill tests to kill it so that was pretty sweet what do you guys think about this one yeah i quite like this card it comes in really clutch a lot of the time kind of like keen eye in that way i feel like it's not as uh, ubiquitous as something like higher education where you just that card is just ripe for abuse you know keen eye and blood pact are i feel like very appropriate in terms of power level as far as like these permanent cards go you know because like you kind of got to think about the turns that you use these effects on and you know, like you were saying, man, from like, like you can go crazy during the witching hour, but sometimes you need that boost. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck at that location for a turn anyway. So it's like, just add the doom, pass the skill test now, and then go about your business. And maybe you'll draw that moonlight ritual before it's too late. And now you're you're good, so it's fine. You know, if you're curious about messing around with doom. Blood Pact is the card to do it with. Yeah, I like Blood Pact. Um, I think what really puts it over the top in my book is the fact that it is particularly useful when you're dealing with boss enemies or final or the final location where you have to discover all the clues to end the scenario. Because who cares how much Doom you have on your Blood Pact if uh, it's the final act of the game? Yeah, just go for it. Yeah, so... Using Blood Pack to um, add plus three to three Rite of Seeking tests or three Shriveling tests, I think is really great. If you're playing like Jim or even Agnes with Baseball Bat, adding plus three to three combat tests for like, say, Jim with a machete or something, like that's pretty good too. I think the fact that it's useful on arguably the most important turn of the game, I mean, then I, th I think that's what makes this like generally useful. And I, I think. It's pretty good. I enjoy it. Plus, you have Moonlight Ritual as kind of your backstop. You know, if if um, that's why we gave Moonlight Ritual a uh, bless token, you know, to kind of protect you so that you can get more general use out of Blood Pact. I've put this in quite a few Mystic decks. I know back in the day when this was first released, I really shied away from it because of the whole idea of adding Doom to cards in play. Mm -hmm. Seems very risky. But I have to say that uh, I as a solo player, I tend to find that a lot of scenarios are fairly generous when it comes to Doom thresholds, and so you can actually get away with a little bit of Doom sometimes, especially, as you said, at the end of a game. But P Blood Pact is great to have, say, you've, you've got your hand of cards, you're playing Agnes, it's just like, okay, I've, I've committed my Fearless level two. Oh, I just need one, I just need to land one more Shriveling hit. I've sort of run out of icons in my hand. Okay, now's the time to to use my blood pack to give me that plus three to to seal the deal. That's when that's when it feels really good to have blood packed on the table. Agnes has a base uh, combat skill value of two, so if you trigger blood pack, she's up at three at five and can pretty reasonably hit something at that point, which can uh, which can come in handy. Like we've said, it's not the kind of card you can just use without thinking about the repercussions but when you need it you're often very very happy to have have that at your disposal especially if you're heading toward the end of a scenario and you know you've got a little bit of leeway in terms of of doom threshold on the agenda or you've got a moonlight ritual just sitting there waiting for a to play this after you have to trigger this it works out pretty well how would we rate this one i think within the context of core and dunwich this gets a plus one this is a really solid card i mean i think all of these permanent cards have just been they've withstood the test of time they're just really solid cards you know the permanent ability alone 
really carries a lot of the usefulness yeah. in cards like this because if you had to draw this and play it I don't know if you're including that at that point because then you're having to spend an action to play it and getting it down and then you have to determine like when the proper skill test is going to be and there's a lot going on at that point but with the permanent you just remove all that entirely it's always going to be on the board when you need it and that alone just makes these upgrades really solid because you they're always going to have them and i think for that alone a plus one is pretty deserving i think once yeah. you have better options you may shy away from it but i think within core and dunwich it's it's a good solid mystic mystic upgrade yeah if i if i look at it as i pay three xp and on a couple of turns of the game i've got like a handful of gutses or a handful of icons then this is, I think, worth a plus one. Just the fact that I can go nuts in the Witching Hour and also go nuts in the last turn of the game, I think, makes this a plus one. Just from, like, if you think of it in an equivalent of, like, icons on cards, it's, it, it's kind of a lot of icons, if you think about it. If you're doing taking three tests and adding a total of nine icons to those tests, maybe even more if you're looking at the Mythos phase, that's, that's, that's a lot. And I think it's worth three XP. Yeah, this one gets a plus one from me as well. Very solid card. Nice yeah. to have on the table. Not something you necessarily need to use every turn. Yeah. But uh, when you need it, it will. Uh, the The bonuses are so generous that uh, you can't go wrong. There is a level zero version of this uh, card. Speaking of uh, drawing it and playing it in the uh, the Devil Reef Mythos pack, uh, I have included that in a deck, but uh, simply for. Uh, down the rabbit hole purposes so i could upgrade it without having to spend xp i don't think i actually ever played it uh out of my uh out of my hand so it was simply there for for xp uh discount purposes but uh, that option is available if you uh if you're willing to pay for it that's going to do it for part three of our look at the mystic cards in the dunwich legacy investigator expansion let us know in the comments down below what you think any uh, final thoughts on this batch of cards? I know all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the the <laughs> Mystic class really has like not done a 180 as far as like their enemy management, but as far as consistency goes, it's all over the place with their yeah. enemy management. Yeah, you know, I feel like could... they were going there were like two themes that the designers when they were first designing this set like came up with doom and skulls and we kind of just got both of them instead of having one of them fleshed out and you can kind of see what's going on here and then you have bind monster which is like you know <laughs> I, it's it's kind of strange to compare song of the dead and bind monster like side by side because they cost the same amount of inexperience all right they're both wildly inconsistent but for totally <laughs> different reasons I guess one of the things I find interesting looking at the Mystic cards so far is I think the designers have gotten a lot better at designing player cards that mesh with the investigators in the box. I think Jim has always sort of been perceived as among the weaker investigators simply because he didn't really get sort of that linchpin was missing. Like... Mm -hmm. When you see a card like Bind Monster, it doesn't immediately be like, hey, that's a gym card, <laughs> right? Like Song of the Dead does that to an extent, but it, it's it's just like it's missing the piece that lets you draw yeah. the skulls. And I feel like they've done that better in recent sets where you can go through sort of like if we look back at our Edge of the Earth cards and we look at, say, the Guardian cards, we're like, that's a Lily card, that's a Lily card, that's a Lily card, that's the... Uh, synergy card and it was sort of clear where all the cards stood or if you were looking at seeker you know norman 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 card for the rest of the card pool and i feel like we just didn't really get that with these sets it's just like we got a lot of sort of the right of seekings which help mystics as general and then jim kind of ended up being like holding out his little tin cup and being like what's what's for me and they're like well here's song of the dead and he's like but I need more. <laughs> what if it, Jim's trumpet let you like exhaust it to find a skull or something? Then then we'd be talking, right? <laughs> yeah, if Jim had a reliable yeah. way to grab skull tokens, 
I don't think yeah. the community would have any misperceptions on how good Jim is. Yeah, I think if uh, Jim had received Olive, would have been a good call. Even if he'd received Nkosi from uh, the Edge of the Earth, which basically turns every special token in the bag into a skull. Now we're talking. Like, now you've gone from two skulls in the bag to to five, maybe even six. Like, that makes a huge difference. So, yeah, it's it's just like there was a missing piece. And, uh, I mean, maybe they were concerned that if they did go too too far into chaos bag manipulation at this stage, it would have... Maybe that was just sort of uncharted territory and they weren't sure how far they could push it without blowing something. But uh, Yeah. I also think um, Grotesque Statue is, at the time at least, it was just too costly XP-wise for what... Because I, I feel like at this point, Grotesque Statue is doing a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to these um, effects that trigger on special tokens. And it's just 4 XP for a Grotesque Statue is just too much at this point. You know, yeah. To be like a foundational card. Yeah, especially when you're... I mean, the impulse is to, to upgrade Rite of Seekin and Shriveling first. And then, yep. I mean, you're already 6, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 XP in at that point, And... You still haven't got to grotesque statue, so that's gonna do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there and happy investigating.